Hi guys, welcome to this tutorial on how to mix the recording of an electronic drum kit with the backing track. Now, this tutorial could be very helpful for um, anybody that's thinking about making drum covers for YouTube, or perhaps somebody who already makes drum covers and just wants to um, improve the quality of their work, or really anybody with an electronic kit who wants to record themselves playing for any reason. Uh, the first thing I'll do is just talk you through what I've got here on the screen. So as you can see, there are three tracks. There's this one, Drums Left, which is a recording coming from the left output of the module on the kit. And I've panned that all the way to the left. Then likewise for the output from the right, panned all the way to the right. And here is my backing track. So... Um, first things first, I will just play that through so you can hear what it's sounding like. So as you can see, as it is here, we've got some peaking going on. So what I'm going to do is select all three tracks and reduce the level. So now, yep, yeah, we've, we've solved that problem, no more peaking. And I'm now going to make a bus so that I can apply some EQ and compression to the drums. So to, so to the left and right side equally. So I'm going to go here into sends, bus, bus one. And I'm going to name that drum bus. And I'm going to send the audio from these two tracks to that bus. Now I'm going to create an EQ for that and I'm going to just show you some things that you can do with an EQ perhaps to kind of affect the the sound and the volume level of the bass drum. So I'm going to select a low frequency um, let's start with around 80 hertz and I'm going to put in a massive boost just so you can hear what that sounds like so expect to hear a ridiculously loud bass drum basically and now I'm going to reduce that level right down and you should notice that the bass drum kind of disappears and gets a lot quieter Now back to the middle. So really to, to do this properly, you need to actually play it with the mix because that's the only way you're gonna, you're gonna really be able to tell if it sounds good. And ultimately that's what you, that's what mixing is all about. You need to make it, you need to make everything kind of sound good together. So if you, if I just play that with the actual, um, with the backing track as well, And now I'm going to make some changes again to that level. So really the differences in, in kind of frequencies around this area is that around around 50 hertz would be a very kind of subby bass. Around 100 will be quite punchy. So it, it sort of depends on the, the way you kind of want to sculpt the sounds and your own personal preferences. But I, I like it around here at 100 hertz, just a small, a small little in increase really, uh, just to bring that bass drum out a little bit more and just to make it a little bit more punchy within the mix. Um, okay, so next I'm going to bring in a bit of compression as well. So I will open a compressor here. And if you're unfamiliar with compression, 
it's probably best just to start with a preset. So uh, we're going to pick this one here, tight drum kit. Play it back, see what it's sounding like. So at the moment, it isn't actually doing anything here. I need to adjust this this level of the threshold. So obviously, yeah, this is now with the compression on. Off. On again. It's, it's a little bit hard to tell because it's also affecting the level, the volume level. So I'm just going to adjust this makeup gain uh, to just around five because that's where you can kind of see that it's its maximum kind of peak is. Yeah, so it's off at the moment, now on. Off. On. So as you can hear with it on, it's kind of, it's smoothing everything out a little bit. It's bringing out some of the other, some of the like the, the hi-hat, the the ride cymbal, some of the drums that are maybe normally a little bit quieter. Um, they they can, can kind of hear that the bass drum and the snare are more or less staying the same, although they are coming through a little bit more clearly too. But it just balances everything out really nicely and just yeah helps to get a better sound overall. Um, so I'll leave that as it is and next I will show you how to a little technique basically that I figured out of how to try to bring out some of the individual drums a little bit more and this is based on how you pan them on the module when you recorded the, the electronic kit so normally on an electronic kit you have got um, maybe the ride panned a little bit more to the right maybe the floor tom pans to the right also hi-hat to the left, maybe a crash symbol a bit to the left. And with this kind of knowledge, you can go in and, and EQ in a way that, that tries to target some of the drums or some of the elements of the kit a bit more individually. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in to the the right uh, recording and I'm going to try to bring, bring in some EQ that affects the, the, uh, the ride symbol. So... I'll just play through the kit only, so the backing track will be muted. And I'll try to target some frequencies where I know the ride symbol will be. So as you can hear around this sort of 6,000 area, 6,000 hertz, um, you can hear that when I increase the, the dB at this in this range, you can hear that it actually affecting the, the ride, how sort of prominent the ride is within the mix of the kit. Um, so here it is with a, a big boost. And if I reduce that, Boost it again. So up at these kind of levels like I've got at the moment, 21 um, dB of boost, you would never have it that loud. I mean, it kind of just sounds ridiculous. It sounds sounds really tinny. But perhaps at sort of a more moderate level, maybe just a few dB, it can, can definitely help to at least bring that that ride symbol out a little bit more make it a bit clearer within the mix without really affecting the overall sound of the kit too bad too badly like making it really tinny or anything like that so that is something that i would definitely recommend at least trying it might not always work but yeah it can be an effective little tool really so um okay so now um, i'm gonna try to add some reverb this is a little um, sort of trick that I've discovered. 
Um, so I'm going to make a new bus for that. So bus two, rename it. So drum reverb. And first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in an EQ. Now, as you probably already know, usually you wouldn't add reverb to any instrument that has a lot of low frequency. So for example, a kick drum or a bass guitar. And the reason is that it just sounds usually really muddy. You lose a lot of clarity. You lose that, that kind of punchiness that you usually want from those kind of instruments or anything really in that kind of low frequency range. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring in a high pass filter. I'm gonna move it up to around 200, 250, 250 hertz. And I'm gonna solo this track and just play it back. So you'll hear basically a sort of tinny drum kit sound. Or nothing at all because I've forgotten to <laughs> send the audio to it. So I'll do that now. There we go. So yeah, now you can hear the tinny drum kit. And my next step is going to be to add in the reverb. And I'm going to select a preset which will be more suitable for a drum kit. So yeah, medium hall, I'll just play it back. And you can hear now the sound of the kit. So the, the tinny kit sound with uh, just pure reverb, none, none of the dry signal. And now I'm going to go back to selecting everything apart from the, the backing track. I'm just going to try to mix in this, uh, this reverb bus. As it is there, you can hear a lot of reverb, obviously too much, but if I reduce it maybe to around this kind of level in the middle of the uh, of the meter, of the fader, you should be able to hear it kind of sounding noticeable, but not certainly not overpowering. And if I then add in the backing track as well, Without reverb, now with reverb. So obviously all of these effects, really the reverb, the compression, the EQ, all comes down to personal preference and usually you would spend a lot longer tweaking all of these things than what I've actually done here in this tutorial. Uh, but at least it gives you a sort of an idea maybe you've picked up hopefully at least a few tips from that and really yeah, it's just down to your own tastes and putting in as much time as you can really to experiment to try things out figure out what you like what you don't like and what you think works for your you know the, the drum sound that you want to achieve now lastly what you would do so say that I'd spent you know as long as I needed to to get everything sounding as good as I thought it possibly could and I was happy with it I would then need to go onto my master channel here the stereo out and to bring in a limiter um, the one that I like to use is the slate digital one and the reason you do this is to make sure that your audio level um, your output level is sort of as loud as it can be obviously without distorting or without affecting the dynamic range in a way that you think is undesirable so once i've got this i'll play it back and i'll try to increase this gain so that perhaps here on this meter we see it peaking towards the top here without obviously distorting which is what this limiter which is what it does it stops it from being able to distort so i'll try that now
there we go this would you know pretty much be at a level now that you could bounce it out put it onto youtube and it would be at a level that would sort of compare to most other music on there so um yeah obviously any questions just ask in the comments i could try to explain some things in more detail um if there's anything you think i didn't really explain too much and um yes thanks for watching and i'll have plenty more content for you soon